Thank you so much, Principal Caracciolo, for the amazing welcome. So next, it's my pleasure to now introduce Holyoke's mayor, my mayor, Mr. Josh Garcia. What's up, everybody? Good morning. Good morning. I hear we have a lot of Massachusetts in the house today. We got people from Chicopee. Who are our Chicopee friends? Franklin Tech in the house? Oh, they're not here yet. They're not here yet. McCann Tech? Are they here? They're not here yet. Pathfinder? We got friends from Springfield, Putnam. Oh, we know Putnam. Side Tech. Smith, Smith Boat in the house. Westfield. Welcome to Holyoke Westfield. Our friends from as far as Whistler. They just walked in and welcome to Holyoke Whistler. I'm very glad to have this chance to give this shout out to the girls in trades. This program is about the very goals that I strongly believe in. Equal rights, equal opportunity, equal pay. With jobs as carpenters and plumbers, electricians and welders. You can write your own ticket, make your own way, and even the playing field. And probably make way more money than what I'm making. Your success and financial stability will serve as a beacon to future generations of girls, and it's an incredible opportunity. So with that being said, welcome to Hoyo, and let's get to work. Thank you so much to Mayor Garcia. We always love to hear from you. So now, I am very pleased to welcome to Holyoke and to the Mass Girls Trades Career Fair, our State Secretary of Labor, Lauren Jones. Good morning. It's wonderful to be here. It's wonderful to join Girls in Trade. Um, and I bring greetings from Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll. Um, I had the opportunity to join the Healy Driscoll administration as Secretary of Labor and Workforce Development. You may be wondering, what do I do? Well, I have the pleasure of working with the governor and Lieutenant Governor to really help think about how we can work with labor, businesses, academia, and so many more partners to build the workforce we need certainly today, but also plan for our future, and we believe very strongly that our future is in this room right here. So let's give a round of applause to all the young girls who have taken time out of their schedule to get more exposure. And certainly, thank you to all of our friends in labor who are tabling today, partnering as part of today's Girls in Trades event, thank you to the Mass Building Trades and so many more partners to really help to influence and share all the great opportunities that our future will have in so many amazing careers in the building trades and in construction. Um, we know that as we think about our future workforce and think about how to ensure that we remain competitive and always number one, um, it really is thinking about our people. It's the young people that are here today studying in our schools. It's also people that are disconnected, haven't figured out their way. But we realize that one of the recipes for success as we think about our people and career pathways is registered apprenticeship, which is why I'm so thrilled that we are celebrating Massachusetts Apprenticeship Week throughout this entire week, including here in Lilio, and also partnering with the Biden administration to celebrate National Apprenticeship Week that's happening all this week throughout the country. And we're doing just that to help tell a story to share more opportunities for people to go into the building trades because we know it's a proven model. It provides that technical training and on-the-job training. You may not know day one, you may not know today, what is it like to be an electrician? What is it like to be a plumber? What is it like to be a bricklayer or a pipe fitter? But this kind of exposure that we have here today is just one way of getting that early interest and there's so many more opportunities for you 
as you think about your careers and your paths. And there's a team of people standing here today that has your back and wants to make sure that we open more doors because as we think about the future and our future workforce, we want to have more women in the trades. And this kind of event today is helping to support that exact mission. And it's also why Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll have named today, November 16th, 2023, as, as Apprenticeship, Women in Apprenticeship Day. And so it wouldn't be a full recognized day without a proclamation, but certainly they took the time to put this together so that you here today see yourself in the commitment by the governor and the to the team here today um, and want to make sure that you guys know as you think about what your future looks like here in Massachusetts, we believe in you. We know that there's amazing opportunities standing here in this room that can be your future and we want to make sure that we unlock those opportunities and we appreciate the partnership in labor and with the community here today to help write that opportunity, write that path for you as you think about your future. So thank you so much for being, uh, being here and for the opportunity to join you today. And let's celebrate Women in Apprenticeship Day. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Jones. Hi, I am Contina Brooks. I am a union operating engineer. We are really pleased that everyone could join us this morning and appreciate all the work you are doing in the State House to support the apprentice program and the expansion of good construction jobs. It is particularly great to be here on National Women in Apprenticeship Day. We are now going to welcome all trade women here to come up front for introductions. And we're going to start with you, Amy. I'm from Westfield, I went to Westfield Tech. 
I've been in for a year, and that's about it. Hi, my name is Danielle Sears. I am a local 596 union laborer in Holyoke, Mass. I've been in for three years. I did not go to tech school. I went through Community Works. Um, and yeah, I love being a union laborer and go union and definitely go into the trades.
Good morning, my name is Marilyn Rosa. I've been a carpenter for 10 years. I'm now a vocational instructor for Putnam. Good morning, my name is Leah. I went to Brooklyn Technical High School, which is a Voltec High School. I'm a sheet metal worker for 36 years. Hi, I am Contina. I live in Springfield. I am a union journey level operator. Um, I've been in just about nine years and I graduated from Putnam. Good! Hi, my name is Tyler Robinson. I've been in, I'm a carpenter. I've been in for 12 years, and now I'm an instructor at Job Corps. And now that you've heard who we are, we want to hear who you are. When we call out your school or shop, give a cheer and let us know if you are in the house. Learning skills and building careers while earning a living and supporting ourselves. 
Today we can explore the many different opportunities and careers available to us. We have a few final speakers. Following our speakers, we will hold the career fair and workshops for both our students here and the educators. Thank you. Checks and benefits grow more when, when you work more, plus your zero dollars in debt. But at the end of the day, no matter what trade or career you choose, you will all be strong and powerful leaders of your own. Thank you. Thank you, Natalie. Again, I'm Brandy. I am with the Union Sheet Metal Workers. I'm pleased to now introduce the president of Mass Building Trades Unions, Frank Callahan. Thank you. Uh, this is great to be here. Uh, despite my Boston accent, I really started out here in the Pioneer Valley. I see Colton Andrews with the Pioneer Valley Building Trades and Labor's 596 in the back. Um, it's been a long road for me, but a good one. 
The Mass Building Trades Unions represents over 75,000 men and women, and it used to be just men, uh, men and women in the construction industry all across the state of Massachusetts, and certainly here in the Pioneer Valley and Western Mass. Uh, we're leading the nation. You, know, you heard about it from the Secretary of Labor, about how today, uh, thanks to our Governor Mara Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, it's Women in Apprenticeship Day in Massachusetts. Uh, they're doing a great job. But you should know that a lot of people have done a great job. Because when I started here in the Pioneer Valley, there were very few women in the trades. And if you went on to a job site and you saw a woman on the job, you saw a woman on the job. You were the only woman on the job. That's not the case anymore. And you have a lot of people to thank. And you, you are, if you see them today, say thank you. They've, they've kicked the door down for you. So you can have those same opportunities that you're hearing about from your sisters uh, in the trades right now. You get good wages. You get the best training in the world. You get good benefits. So if you get sick, you can take care of yourselves and your families. And I know you're not thinking about it now at your age, but you know, you have a, a secure retirement, so you don't have to worry about that either. And there's another big difference from being in a union in the construction industry. In a lot of industries, there's a big gap. Women don't make the same as men, and that's wrong. But if you're in a union, you make just as much, and you get treated the same way as the men on the job site. That's an unusual thing, unfortunately, in our society. But you get that with a union. You know, you've already made a, a decision, more than most of your friends, I'm sure, that might be on a college career track, you've made a decision to look at the construction industry, and you've made additional sacrifices. I mean, just this morning, as I was getting up a little extra early to be here, uh, I, li I live in the eastern part of the state, but Miniman Vocational is in my district, and I saw a couple of kids walking down the street to catch the bus. The bus stop for Miniman Vocational Technical is down the street. Uh, down the block from my house. And those kids are making an extra sacrifice to do a little travel a little bit further, just like you. So I know you're committed, and I want to extend that commitment from our side to you. If you're interested in a great career, and it's a great career, not just a job, as Secretary Jones already said, it's a great career, making good money, good benefits, with respect, with training, and you can earn a lifetime and support your family I know you're probably not thinking about that either right now, but you will someday. Come look at us at the trades. It's not for everybody, but if you decide to go into the construction industry, come with us. I think it's an important choice. I think it's the best choice, clearly, from where I stand. Uh, but I also want to mention one last thing. Earlier I mentioned about some of the pioneers in, in your industry, in the construction industry, people that I know, who were that only woman on the job? I'm going to put a challenge to you. If you decide to join us and you come in, you've got to open the door for the women that are coming behind you. Because even though Massachusetts is over 10% women in the trades, it's triple the national, almost triple the national average, that's not enough. That's not enough. Because 20 years ago, when I was talking about this, we didn't think it was doable to get to 10%. People scoffed at it, and here we are. It's not enough, we're not stopping, and we want to work with you. And again, this is a great industry. Many of you already know it. You may have parents in the trades. Uh, you may have family members or friends. But the sky's the limit. You know, just earlier this week, we were negotiating an agreement on clean jobs to build offshore wind. And I know that's in the eastern part of the state. But we negotiated an agreement last year for the Holyoke Soldiers Home right down the street. And guess what's in there? There's requirements that there be a certain amount of women on that project, a certain amount of people of color. We're opening the doors. This isn't, this isn't your father's, and I mean it specifically. This isn't your father's labor movement. It's not your father's unions. It's not your father's industry anymore. The door is open. So take advantage of it. Grab it with both hands. If you do decide to go into the trades, look us up. Everybody's here today represented for Western Mass. That's the right choice for you. That's the right choice for your career. And we're more than welcome. We need you. We want you. And the sky's the limit. Thanks, everybody, for being here.
Thank you, Frank. You'll now hear from Jaylen Dos Santos, an educator at Blackstone Valley Tech, but also the chair of the Mass Girls in Trade Student Leadership Council. Good morning, ladies. First, I want to recognize Senator Vilas. He's in the back of the room. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for being with us this morning. So as Brandy said, I'm Jaylene Dos Santos, and I'm an engineering instructor at Blackstone Valley Tech. I've been an educator for 10 years, but what's more important is I've been an engineer for 16. I'm also the leader, uh, the chair of the Student Leadership Council for Massachusetts Girls in Trades. As the chair of the Leadership Council, I get to promote the wonderful work that all of you get to do every single day. The Leadership Council engages students like you currently enrolled in construction-related careers and technical education programs in discussions and activities to promote leadership skills, fairness, and equality for learners just like you. Our specific focus is on women in pursuing careers in the union construction trades, but are welcome to all broad-minded allies. We participate in monthly meetings, leadership summits, and mentoring the next generation of tradeswomen. Mark Anthony once said, and one day she discovered she was fierce and strong and full of fire that not even she could hold herself back because her passion burned higher than her fears. The goal for today and every day forward is for you to continue to overcome these stereotypes that we face every day. Take a minute, talk to your instructors, talk to these wonderful tradeswomen who are here who have started the path for you. I encourage you to ask the hard questions and continue to work hard every day. Educators, if you are not currently enrolled in the Student Leadership Council, please find me, ask me questions. Schools that are registered will get priority registration for our Leadership Summit in April. Thank you and have a great rest of your day, ladies. Thank you, Jillian. Um, I don't know if Senator Felix wanted to say something while you're up here. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. How you doing? I like that motivation. I'm just coming by to say hello and to welcome you. I have the distinct honor of representing this great community, the Massachusetts State Senate. I am a little bit late. We were on the floor till about 1.30 in the morning, so I got home late. But I just wanted to say what a great occasion this is. And I love the fact that we have so many people here from so many different communities in Holyoke learning about the trades. I heard my friend, Mr. Callahan, talking about the trades of today is not the trades of yesterday. So please, please, please listen to everything they say because the one thing I know with absolute certainty, if you decide to go down this path, you absolutely can find a career a well-paying job, something that will be great for you, your family, and everything. There's so many benefits to what they do. So pay attention to this because it's really cool stuff that you're going to hear about all throughout the day. So welcome, everybody. Hello, and have a beautiful day. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you, Senator. I am particularly pleased to introduce our final and keynote speaker for today, Leah Rambo. Leah is a deputy... De Deputy, Deputy Director of the United States Department of Labor Women's Bureau. That, that means she works in D.C. for the federal government to ensure women have access to good jobs with good career prospects across the country. She fights for all of us and is a member of my own international, the sheet metal worker, also known as SMART. Please welcome Leah Rambo. So I was just saying, there's certain jobs that they send me to that I have to do, and then you have ones like this that I just want to do. I'm so excited to be here today to talk to so many young women that are interested in thinking outside of the box, making money outside of the box. It's so important and so glad you're here. So when I look at you, I think about myself. Um, I know you guys, some of you are about to graduate. Well, I graduated, right? a while back, right, 85, so I'm old. But I was in the seat that you were in. I went to a technical high school. 
Um, I took electrical engineering. I thought I wanted to be an electrician. And, um, and then I tried sheet metal. Someone told me it was fun. I didn't know what it's about. And I spent 35 years in the trade as a sheet metal worker. And the one thing I want to talk to you about these great trades, it's really about economic dependence, economic freedom for yourselves. To be able to take care of yourselves and to make decisions for yourselves that don't have to do with anything else. I want to tell you one little story. It happened in last week when I talked to the eastern part of the state. I was sitting at the table with a young woman. She was a senior. I said, what do you want to do? And she goes, well, I think carpentry, but it depends on my boyfriend. I said, what do you mean it depends on your boyfriend? She goes, well, he's thinking about doing this, and so he's older, so he's going to get to pick first. And after he decides, then we'll see what I'm going to do. So I tried to be as supportive as I could to her as I was speaking to her, but I want to just talk to you about that. You know, as young women, these jobs, this opportunity, puts you in a position to take care of yourself, to make decisions for yourself, decisions that are going to do, are going to be the best for yourself. And it's very important, if nothing else, is that you know your voice. Learn to develop your voice because that's what you're gonna to need to make it in these trades. You saw all these trades women, and clearly myself who came up here and they talked about, you know, we love our trade, we've done these great things, but we've all had challenges. You know, we've all had tough times. Has there been anybody in here that someone from their family, their friends, or school told them, why are you doing that? That's not a job for girls. Anybody? Just a handful of you, huh? If it's just a handful, that means we've made some progress. Because normally when you start saying things, I want to be a, a contractor, I want to be an engineer, I want to be a, a sheet metal worker, a carpenter, electrician, usually people kind of say, eh, why do you want to do that? Don't you want to be a teacher? I mean, teachers are great, right? I wouldn't have been here without a teacher. But they don't make the money that you guys are going to make. So make sure that you have your voice and make sure that when you have someone, we call them the naysayers, when they're about to tell you what you can or can't do, that you have something in your head that you know is going to give you the strength so that you can say, no, I can do that. No, I will do that. And you know what? I'm probably going to do it better than, than what you could do. And so when I look at my career and I think about you guys, I think about myself, you don't ever put any limits on yourself. I was the first woman in my union to become an instructor. I was the first one to do what we call testing and balancing. And then later on, the first one to be the training director for an apprenticeship program. And then the first one to be on our executive board. And now the first tradeswoman to serve in, in this capacity as a senior executive in, in the administration. But the goal is always, it's good to be the first, but the goal is not to be the last. And so my goal is always to come behind me, whoever's coming behind me, to make sure my shoulders are broad enough to block some of the stuff they're gonna get so that they can keep moving. And that's your goal too. So I'm glad you're here, but you've got friends, right? You've got families, you've got little sisters. Talk to them. Talk to them about having options, expanding themselves. Right now the government has trillions trillions of dollars coming into infrastructure money and construction. That means you're going to get paid a lot of money for a long time if you can make it in these trades. So don't let anyone discourage you. You just keep plugging along. And I'm so proud of all of you. And it's great to see you and honored to be able to speak to you women today. Thank you, Leah. We really appreciate you making the trip to Western Mass today. Um, we're now going to be, uh, we're, we're done with the speaking section, and we're going to be uh, separating into two groups, one to start at workshops, and one to stay here in the gym um, for the career fair. And then after an hour, we'll switch them. Um, at noon, we'll gather back here for lunch, um, and the raffle drawing.